And that's what we see happening today. The, the government's taking more control here domestically, and there's also greater and greater globalism uh, that's taking place. But, you know, we're $11 trillion in debt. I heard a guy on one of these talk shows the other day say that by the time they're through with all the stimulus here in America, they could have paid off every mortgage in the United States. That's the amount of money. Now, I would have liked that better if they'd have done that. Now, go pay off all the Every mortgage in the United States could be paid off with what's taking place. Uh, we're, we're selling our future to the Chinese, to others who have these uh, sovereign wealth funds. They're, they're flush with cash. Now, some of these sovereign wealth funds have been diminishing in places like Russia and other places as the oil prices are drying up. But we're selling our future and indebtedness to these other countries. And, you know, 20 years ago, if you'd have talked about America not being the great superpower in the world again, people would have thought you were crazy. When you say that today, people, people have a, a sober look on their face and they realize uh, that's no far-fetched idea uh, at all. I, mean, I got this off the Internet. I mean, just, you know, a picture of our country. I mean, the crown jewels of our nation are being sold to foreigners as they're coming in. Uh, to buy them at bargain prices. Another thing is uh, the, the oil addiction that we have in our country. The world uses about 86 million barrels of oil a day, and we use about one-fourth of that. Now, prices have come down dramatically here recently, but if something happens over in the Middle East, and just think now of prices with all the other problems we have, if oil prices were to escalate suddenly. I mean, that, that would put our economy into full cardiac arrest. Back in 1973, during the first Arab oil embargo, we were importing about 35% of our oil. And there's a commitment to get off of that and to, not be, to, to be energy dependent. Now we import almost 70%. It's doubled in that period of time. Uh, they literally have us over a barrel uh, in, in the world. We, we've given them the, the noose really to put around our neck uh, to hang us. We consume more gasoline than the next 20 countries combined. We use 7.6 billion barrels of oil a year. I mean, they found all that oil up in the Bakken Shale up in North Dakota here a while back, and I thought, man, that's going to be wonderful. They found 4.3 billion barrels of oil they think they can extract from, from there. That's six months of supply uh, for our country. And the problem is two-thirds of the world's oil reserves are in the Middle East which is far away, and it's in the most dangerous part of the world. It's a fragile supply line to get it from there to here. And there's a constant fear of terrorism there somewhere in Saudi Arabia against that oil infrastructure that would uh, doom uh, the world oil markets. Another thing that I see in our country today that could bring us down is what's happening inside our country. And this is something very sobering indeed to consider. Listen to this statement from Thomas Macaulay, a British parliamentarian from 1857. He says, Your republic will be as fearfully plundered and laid waste by barbarians in the 20th century as the Roman Empire was in the 5th century. With this difference, the Huns and the Vandals who ravaged the Roman Empire came from without. Your Huns and Vandals will have been engendered within your own country. Sobering statement to be written uh, such a long time ago, isn't it? Robert Bork said this in his book, Slouching Towards Gomorrah. Y'all remember Bo Robert Bork, you know, the term getting borked, you know, when you go on the Supreme Court. He said this, American culture is so complex and resilient, but it is also not to be denied there are many aspects of almost every branch of our culture that are worse than ever before and that the rot is spreading. There have been 50 million abortions in America since 1973. Think about that. 50 million abortions have taken place in this country. I read a statistic the other day that blew me away. 26% of, of the young girls in America ages 14 to 19, 26%, that's one out of four, have at least one sexually transmitted disease. 26%, this is from the Centers of Disease Control, uh, of girls 14 to 19 years of age. 80% of the material on the Internet is pornography. It's a 10 to $14 billion industry uh, a year. Back in 1948 in America, 3.5% or, or, uh, of all births were out of wedlock in 1948. In 1960, it had gone up to like 5%. Uh, today it's 40% and it's expected to be 50% by 2015. From 3.5% in 1948 to 50% here in just a few years. 
I read something the other day as well. 25% of young evangelicals, 18 to 29 years of age, believe that homosexual marriage is okay. So one out of four evangelical young people, 18 to 29, think that homosexual marriage uh, is okay. Open up your Bibles to Romans chapter 1 with me. What we see in Romans 1 is uh, a a sobering downward spiral. I call this uh, the wrath of God's abandonment. In Romans 1.18, it says, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. You notice the wrath of God, it says, is being revealed. It's present tense. Against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. And it goes on then to talk about when people turn away from God. For even though they knew God, verse 21, they didn't honor Him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and they exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man, and of birds, and four-footed animals, and crawling creatures. Therefore, and you'll notice three times we're going to see this phrase, therefore, God gave them over. Look at verse 26, God gave them over. Down in verse 28, just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over. What we see in this passage is that God, the, the first stage of God's judgment of a nation is His handing people over to their sin. People often ask the question, when is God going to judge America? And the biblical answer from Romans chapter 1 is that He already is. God is already judging our country, and we can see it in these things that are being evidenced. It's not that God is judging you for these things, but these things being present are the evidence that God has given us over to the wrath of abandonment, abandoning people to their own uh, sinful ways. Now, this word God gave them over means more than just allowing us to have the consequences of it. There's actually an active element in this word, what to give over means, it's been translated by people that almost God, since people go in that direction, goes ahead and gives them a push further into it. It's kind of like uh, when I was a boy, um, we used to go over to Will Rogers Park there in Oklahoma City. You know, Will Rogers is a real famous Oklahoman. We'd go over there and uh, they had a, a uh, swing set over there. I mean, you know, not like these real nice ones kids have nowadays. I mean, these old rusty old things there. And there was a, a slide there. The boy, when I was a little kid, you know, seemed like it was like 30 feet long. You know, it's probably like five feet, but it's all blown up in your imagination as a kid. And it was all rusted out and all, but my dad would go over there and he'd take some wax paper. Some of you all may have done this when you were a kid. He'd rub the slide with wax paper and then he'd give you a piece of the wax paper to sit on. And, uh, you know, it just seemed like you went, you know, 90 miles an hour down this real long slide, you know, as a little kid. And he'd come up there, you know, and give you a push. And, I mean, you'd just take off and it was, you know, have a great time going down this slide so fast. But that comes to mind when I think of this passage of God giving people over. It's like they've made the choice, and God comes and greases the skids, as it were, for them to plunge headlong into their sin. And you'll notice the first downward spiral in this abandonment to God's, of God's wrath. It says, God gave them over in the lust of their hearts to impurity, that their bodies might be dishonored among them. And they exchanged the truth of God literally for the lie. And they worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who's blessed forever. Amen. 